On February 15th, IBF super middleweight champion Caleb Plant returns home to Tennessee for the first time in his professional career. Standing in his way is the former champion from Germany, Vincent Feigenbutz. Caleb wants to stop Vincent in Nashville. It's his first fight in Nashville. He's got his hometown there watching him. He wants to stop Vincent. It's not going 12 rounds, just like the Mike Lee fight. Either he can wave the white flag or I'll wave it for him. This is all I do. This is all I do. This is all I live and breathe is boxing every day. I love boxing <laughs> so much. He may not be as well known in America. This is a guy who's 32 and 2, 28 knockouts. I'm not taking this lightly. I'm not overlooking him. I, you really don't need any more motivation than that. I don't feel like there's anybody out there. I personally think that this um, this kid, 24 year old, 31 and two, Vincent Fegan Boots. I like calling him Fegan Boots. I forgot what they called him here. Well, anyway, um, pressure fighter, power puncher, kind of looks like a lichen a little bit. You know, bone structure. It looks just overall very strong, right? He's coming over here to the States, to Nashville, Tennessee, to try to win a second title. He was a WBA world champion back when he was like 20 years old or some shit, right? When was that? Let's go look at his resume. I got a chance to watch a little bit of tape on him. In fact, I want you to see this right here. Let me let me turn this up. I want you to see this. Here's a little bit of um, a clip of him. He just looks strong, right? By the way, this is what I'm watching right here. Uh, we're going to show you some more clips of this up at the uh, top screen. This is a uh, PVC countdown, Caleb Plant, Vincent Feigen boots. I wish they had more Feigen boots is what they call them. I wish they had more, you know, of a look inside of um, um, the life of um, Feigen boots over there in uh, Germany. But I understand they couldn't probably, you know, have the money to send the Fox crew over there or whatever the case may be. But looking at his resume, put it this way. I think he should be respected. 31 and 2 with 28 KOs. He has knocked out his last one, two, three, four, five opponents. Seen him fight before somewhere. Last loss was back in 2016. He was um, 20 years old at the time. And when he fought a guy twice, Giovanni Do de Corrales, didn't he fight on a matchroom card? He's an Italian fighter, isn't he? Matchroom Italy or something? 24 years old right now. I don't know, man. Caleb Plant should take this guy seriously. You know, stay on the bike. You know, outbox this dude. Don't try to engage. You know, I understand he's going to be in Nashville. You know, look what happened to J-Rock in Philly. I hate to keep bringing that up. You know, this is uh, Caleb Plant's first fight ever home, right? He's never fought in Nashville. He's even fought here in Philly in a stadium in in Philly. Where the hell is that at? He resides out of Las Vegas, but he's from Nashville, Tennessee. He's fighting in Nashville in the Bridgestone Arena. 19-0 with 11 KOs. Last win was against a nasty-ass glove licking Mike Lee on an undercard of Pacquiao versus Thurman. He was the uh, actually the free TV main event leading into the pay-per-view. 
Jose Utzcott, the guy a lot of people thought, you know, he was going to uh, lose that fight. He proved a lot of people wrong and, you know, really adopted the sweet hands. Right now, 168 pounds. I think he has the tools to, to I think he has the tools to beat David Benavidez in my personal opinion. And this fight against this guy, Vincent Fegan Boots, is gonna in my opinion, see, I'm a hardcore boxing fan. So even though you guys over here in the States are some boxing degenerates and don't really follow the sport, I can't give Caleb Plant shit for fighting Vincent Fegan Boots. Because he's the IBF mandatory. And you know how the IBF get down. If you don't, they will strip you. I don't give no fighter shit for fighting their mandatories. I don't, unless it's a rare unification where they could have took a unification, but they, uh, you know, I just don't, all right? However, I don't know about Caleb Plant and Billy Joe Saunders. You know, they have similar kind of styles, and to me, there's still a nice little question mark around Caleb Plant. You know, he needs one, one, he needs one more significant win, in my opinion, because Mike Lee didn't do it. You know, for me to be like, okay, all right, he's the man up there. Caleb Plant, not Caleb Plant, Colin Smith in his last fight, and we're talking about the one top 168 pounders. Colin Smith in his last fight against John Ryder, he fucked up all of his momentum looking real, real suspect. But also, maybe Canelo might choose him now after Canelo talks with Mar Royota Morata have fallen apart or fallen apart. Now, I don't never see Caleb Plant and Canelo ever fighting. That's just my per personal opinion. However, They'll always be in the same divisions, you know, whether even if Caleb Plant move up to 175, Canelo has always shown he can compete up there. So as long as Caleb Plant keep winning, who knows, maybe one day, two, three years down the line, it could happen. But I don't see that as, as like a possibility. WBC champion David Benavidez is mandatory. He's Avni Yildirim. He don't have to fight him if he fights Caleb Plant because that's how it works. Unifications, Trump mandatories. It's just that. Caleb Plant would then, if, well, the winner of Benavidez versus Caleb Plant would have to fight Avner Yildirim. And it's crazy because Peter Quillen lost to Alfredo Angulo. Caleb Truax is back, so we can see Caleb Truax, who's on this undercard, by the way, against Alfredo Angulo to be the next IBF mandatory. What is going on? But at the same time, you know, Peter Quillen has been given those chances, you know? He's been given those chances. And that right there is the division, my friend. Let's go get you some more um, highlights from this real quick. We'll be right back. We're going to talk about it on T Street Controversy with FightView360.com. Please subscribe. Skariki. Going into that fight, if somebody told you that somebody was going to go down, everybody would have said, oh, Caleb's going down. Been doing this for a long time, like 17 and a half years straight. It was really my whole life's work coming down to one moment. It was either I was gonna get my hand raised or it was going to be everyone saying that I'm just another hype job. Jose said about Plant, I don't respect Caleb Plant. He talks too much, I will punish him, beat him up, and then knock him out. The biggest mistake that Jose and his team made was they underestimated us. And I was like, perfect. Just keep overlooking us. For the first round, I knew. I knew right then, before I knocked him down the first time, as soon as the first round was over. I thought, mm, long night for Buddy. First one, second round, stepped around him. Caleb Plant, you got this kind of like charismatic, off putting, smug confidence to him, though, don't he? You know, but as long as you got the hands backing that shit up, you know, he got the charisma, even if it may come across as a little smug. Off balance, balance. Caught, caught him in between, between shots, shots and, and really shocked the champion. Plant aggressive here. After measuring, now he's delivering. Two rounds later in round four. four. That boy good. That was, that was a vital point of the fight, fight because Caleb had just, there was a clash of heads and he had just been cut. Caleb Plant is cut over his right eye. The champion had been struggling the first three rounds, but now he sees blood. Okay, that's something to give him a little bit of confidence. All right, so he starts getting a little bit more aggressive. They're in a heated exchange and Caleb. And you know, even if you look at guys like at 160 that can possibly move up, like possibly Charlo, 168 I mean. 
you know, Caleb Plant's got some options for the next, like, year and a half plus more. You know, we just got to hope they keep this momentum going. By the way, this is a PBC countdown. Um, if you have Comcast Xfinity, I know, you can actually um, watch it. It's actually available. This is how I'm watching it, through the um, Xfinity app. Um, I don't know what other build-up content they have in store for the fight. Here is the undercard, by the way. The Caleb Truax fight is going to be untelevised, by the way, against some Ernest, um, Ernest Amozu. I'm going to put all this information down below in the description box. The co-feature, or then I don't like saying co-feature anymore. I like saying the 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 lead main, the lead undercard support is Brian Perella versus Abel Ramos. The Rasheed Warren fight, I don't know if this is going to be on PBC and FS1 or not. But I know the main free TV Fox card is going to open up with Austin Dulé versus Diego uh, Magdaleno. This is what's going to open up the card on PBC on Fox Sports. Then you're going to have uh, Brian Perella versus Abel Ramos. Oh, here we are. Brian Perella. Abel Ramos, and then of course the uh, main event, Plant versus uh, Fagin Boots, Fagin Boots, Fagin Boots, Fagin Boots. So to me, looking at this card, looking at March the seventh with Kwanowski versus Robert Hellenius, looking at. FS1 with James Kirkland. I'm like, yo, PBC on Fox, y'all regressing a little bit. Y'all need to get it together. Like, and give us some, you know, some better fights out here. This is looking like that PBC Fox shit from fucking 2000 and fucking 16 and 17. For real, for real. It's like, you know, I, I love, like, it, it's, it is different. It is a higher production quality than it was back then. And, you know, especially with what they call the shoulder programming, like this content we're covering right here. You know, but we're going to talk more and um, actually reference this episode a lot more because there's a lot in this 45 minutes, you know, because it's pretty much primarily dedicated to him. Look at nasty ass glove licking Mike Lee. Remember, he like he like licked his glove like, uh, uh, and then tried to hit Caleb with it. And then he did like this big ass spit in the ring, like not a normal spit either. He's a nasty ass subway Mike Lee. And he seemed so elegant and shit in the build up and all composed. Got into the ring, turned into a nasty ass animal that needs to be caged away. He made a mistake. I kind of lost him. Caleb Quick said, I'm not letting it go 12 rounds. He can wave the white flag or I will wave it for him. You know, he's a big guy. He was a strong guy. He was an athlete. You know, I felt a couple times when we clinched up. I thought, man, this is, this is a strong dude right here. But um, muscles don't win fights. Skills win fights. Boxing IQ wins fights. Grit wins fights. I'm glad he was able to do that, though, on, um, on like a big card. Like the overall the event, even though he headlined the uh, PBC on Fox. But still, like I said, PBC, you know, it's like, bro, this is y'all y'all spring schedule. Like, what's, 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 what's late winter spring schedule? What's going on? You know, but anyway, I'm T Street Controversy with FightView360.com. Please subscribe.